guys, welcome back to another weekly reading vlog. It's actually Thursday. Um, I didn't vlog the beginning of this week, but I am actually going to London for the next four days. So I'm about to leave to go to Leicester to my boyfriend's house and then on Friday morning we will be going down to London until Monday. So most of this vlog will be that. We'll be doing the Harry Potter studio tour, we're going to a theatre show, we're doing lots of fun things. So um, hopefully this will be an interesting vlog even though I have started it on Thursday. <laughs> I don't know how many spoken updates I'm going to be able to give because I will just be on the move most of the time but hopefully you'll be able to tell what I'm doing anyway. But I have actually finished three books already this week. So I finally finished reading Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. Rated it three stars, it was okay. I found that the plot dragged on a little bit more than it needed to and again, as I said in previous vlogs, I just didn't believe the characters. There was only one character in this which I felt was authentic or I could believe that that was who they were. The rest of them I was just kind of like, I don't, believe this is who they are or I've just been told this is who they are and it doesn't seem natural in a way so it's like with Darlington for instance everybody's just like oh he's a snob but everybody loves him but you're just told that I didn't really see it and then the main character Alex she is kind of trying to fit in with the society that she's now in she has this kind of violent streak within her but she just suddenly starts like punching through glass and stuff and I'm like what? <laughs> so yeah, it was interesting, but I just... I was expecting more, maybe? I'm not quite sure. But I rated that three stars, and then I read The Penelope Ad by Margaret Atwood. This is a retelling of The Odyssey, but from Penelope's perspective, Penelope being Odysseus's wife. I really enjoyed this one. I rated it four stars, and that's mainly because I kind of like the... not sarcastic tone, but it's just... Penelope in this book has a very specific kind of voice and she's kind of wanting to lay out her story and tell it how it is. It kind of has the no bullshit approach but it's interesting because all the way through they're talking about how much both her and Odysseus are known for lying so you're kind of like reading it and wondering whether you can even trust it in the first place because she's a renowned liar and a trickster. It was also really interesting because you have the perspective of the 12 maids who were just like ruthlessly murdered and I feel like that's not a voice that you get too often in retelling so that was really interesting to read about. I absolutely sped through it, read it in two days, could have read it in less but I kind of pissed myself with it. And then the final one that I finished was Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. I rated this one three stars, it was again it was okay but it was very much a children's classic. It is very quaint very moralistic, there's a lot of didacticism in it in that everything has a moral to the story and it was very repetitive in that respect and by the end I did get a little bit bored. <laughs> and I also think that the ending wrapped up a little too nicely but I suppose it is a kid's book so that is kind of bound to happen. But yes, it was very much one of those charming, quaint kind of children's books where not too much happens but you kind of want to read more about the characters. I will say though that I think I will enjoy the film a lot more because I don't think that would be quite as childish. So um, yeah. And for Believeathon, this one fit the prompt to read a children's classic. So for my trip to London, I've actually kind of started two books. I've, well, I've started one of them and I'm going to start another one today, I think. So the first one is Prince of Thorns by Mark Lawrence. This is a fantasy book and I just wanted a fantasy book, but none of the ones that I have on my shelves. So I went on Scribd and just had a look through. And Mark Lawrence is an author that I've been wanting to try. So I decided to start this one on Scribd. And it also means that I could have a book with me on my phone. So when I'm traveling around London, for instance, when we go to the Harry Potter studio tour, I don't want to take a backpack or anything. So I can just take my phone and we'll have a book with me for the train journey. I started this one. I really do not know much about the plot at all. So sorry, but I'm not going to give a synopsis right now because I do have about five minutes until I need to leave. <laughs> I've only read two chapters of this but it is very brutal as in chapter one has a massacre and lots of people being raped. It's intense but I feel like this book might remind me of Nevernight slightly because I can already tell that there's a sly arrogant slash sarcastic tone to how the person talking is narrating the story. The one thing that is throwing me off is that apparently the main character is under 15 years old. So we haven't had him say specifically how old he is, but we have had another character say, oh, you must be 
15 at the most. And his response to that was, oh, are you kidding? By the time I'm 15, I'm going to be king. Which kind of grates on me because I'm like, you're 15. <laughs> but obviously it's a fantasy world and I don't know anything about the character yet. I don't know how they've been raised. I presume they were raised to be an assassin of some sort because yikes, this person is brutal. But they're also the leader of 40 men. And again, I'm like, you're meant to be under 15 years old and this just isn't processing. So I don't know whether that's going to be a kind of thing that throws me off or whether I'm just going to age them up in my head. I suppose I'll see the further I read on. But very intrigued to see what this one's like. And the other one that I will be taking with me, I will put a picture up again because I've packed it. But I'll be reading North Child by Edith Patu for believe -a So this one is quite a big children's book and it was recently republished. It follows a girl who was born facing north and this means that she's destined to go on an adventure of some sort. During this adventure she makes a pact with a giant white bear and that is all I remember from the synopsis. It sounds very reminiscent of Northern Lies. So I'm very intrigued to see whether the stories kind of clash at all in that respect or whether they are completely different stories and just have very similar cover and title. But I am hoping to get both of these books finished by Monday but I know that when it comes to me travelling I don't always read as much as I can. I guess we'll find out but I do have many hours of coach journeying and train journeying especially on Monday. But speaking of which I do have a train to go and catch so enjoy the London footage. <laughs>
Hi guys, so the lighting is probably awful in here and the quality of the video but I just wanted to give a quick update because so far this vlog has just been many clips of London but yesterday we arrived and we had some time to kill so we went and found Buckingham Palace had a wander around St James's Park which is where the squirrels were really friendly and I achieved full wood nymph mode by summoning them to me we ended up at the Airbnb and then in the evening we just had a wander around went and had Chinese food in Chinatown I found Seven Dials once again if anybody doesn't get that reference by the way it's um, what the main character's gang in the Bone season is based off so the Seven Dials is where they're based and they're called the Seven Dials it's all very much based on that so um, I get very excited when I see that <laughs> and it's just fitting as well because the Mime Order is this month's book of the month for Bonathon so um, I'm very excited to read that now it's very much put me in the mood to read the Mime Order so I might end up starting that when I get home and then today, as you will have seen, we went to the Harry Potter studio tour, which was just amazing and magical and everything good in the world. <laughs> Rich is laughing at me, I can see in the mirror. <laughs> but yeah, I have been to the studio tour before, but I went in 2012, I think. So many years ago, and I haven't seen any of the new installations or anything. So the Hogwarts train was there, there was the Forbidden Forest, there was Gringotts, and oh, it was amazing. I don't know how much I've shown because I don't want to spoil it for people who have been, but one of the things in Gringotts, if you've been, you probably know which bit I'm reacting to, but it was good. It's great there. We spent about four hours there and came back here. I had a power nap because I was very tired. <laughs> um, but now we're going to go and watch a show called Grown Ups and if anyone's heard of the play that goes wrong it's from the same theatre company so it's kind of a comedy type show. Richard's very much a fan of the <laughs> company but um, yeah we'll be back down before Christmas as well to see another show that they're doing. As for reading updates I have read 150 pages of North Child but I am hoping to get about halfway through tonight. Quite enjoying it so far. I was a little bit confused for a while but I think it's pretty much I've caught on now. I feel like I don't have that much to say though because everything's just been very London based this weekend so uh, yeah I just thought I'd try and give a bit of an update before carrying on with all the many shots of London. I don't know what we're doing tomorrow yet, probably many museums, but tomorrow is our last full day here so uh, we'll probably try and cram in as much as possible. Oh I didn't show you my haul! Bear with. So from the studio tour I don't usually like getting souvenirs I don't know I don't like random things like magnets and keyrings and I've said this before but I didn't really want any of the usual stuff that you get from the studio tour but I did get the official guide which is just a booklet of stuff that was inside the tour and I do kind of have booklets of bookish places I've been so I have one from the Bronte Parsonage and stuff like that so that will sit on part of my bookcase but I also got the Creature Vault. I got this for a friend quite a while ago and pretty much wanted it for myself so um, when I saw it in the gift shop for the studio tour I decided to get it and this is going to be my souvenir for this trip to London because this is basically just a huge book going through all the creatures in Harry Potter so for instance chapter one is forest dwellers and you go through centaurs and unicorns and things like that there's illustrations it tells you how they built things like Aragog and it's just really really interesting so very glad I have that now it can go with my illustrated editions of Harry Potter which speaking of which I think I will end up rereading illustrated Goblet of Fire when I get home because I'm very much in a Harry Potter mood now and I never managed to reread Goblet of Fire, but maybe with the illustrated edition, I finally will do. <laughs>
Okay guys, first of all, I know I look like shit, but um, I just got home and it's been many hours worth of travelling so I was not putting makeup on or anything. <laughs> Second of all, I know the lighting is stark white but I just needed my ring light so I can actually talk and have some decent quality to my camera. So as I just said, I am back home now and I am exhausted from travelling. <laughs> I'm just exhausted from the entire weekend to be honest because we did just try and cram in as much as possible into every single day. I think yesterday was the most intense. So I did do an update, I remember doing an update from Saturday onwards about what I'd been doing on Friday and Saturday but yesterday on Sunday was basically a day of sightseeing museums, I don't know, but we first went to the Victoria and Albert Museum. We then very briefly popped into the Natural History Museum to have a look at the big dinosaur skeleton, but it was absolutely rammed in there. It was... it was intense, but I think because it was a Sunday and the Natural History Museum has a lot of things for children, it was just very... very intense. So we didn't stay there for long and it didn't have too much stuff that I was interested in. I don't know whether Richard particularly likes it but he didn't seem too bothered. So then we had a bit of a break from museums and walked up Charing Cross Road. We went to bookshops and things like that on there. We went to one shop which was called House of Spells I think where I did buy something but I can't show you because it is a Christmas present for someone. But that shop you walk in and it's all Harry Potter merchandise on the bottom and then there's an upstairs part which is like Game of Thrones merchandise and stuff. It's just... it's incredible. I didn't end up buying any books but I did get postcards which I will show you in a second because we then also went to the British Museum and I could have cried. We didn't go through all of it because it is an absolutely huge place and you'd have to go on many visits to be able to cover it all but we basically just did the ancient Greek rooms and part of the enlightenment room like we'd had a quick look in there but the Greek section just blew my mind. I couldn't believe that I was seeing things from ancient Greece I was seeing artwork that's inspired by Greek mythology which I'm literally doing my dissertation on. It just blew my mind and at one point I got really overwhelmed and was just like I can't believe it's real in a way because I've just not come across anything like that before so I was just walking around completely in awe. I've got so many photos and videos. Hopefully I've managed to put all the clips that I filmed together in a kind of I don't know some way that makes sense. <laughs> But that place did just blow my mind, even down to the gift shop. The gift shop is absolutely gigantic. <laughs> but I did buy some things from the gift shop, mainly postcards. I have this weird thing where I just seem to like gravitate towards postcards, even though I have nothing to do with them, because I don't want to send them out, I want to keep them because of the designs. And I do have this idea in mind to have a kind of postcard wall, or just put them on a wall somewhere to decorate. But I don't currently have the space to do that, so I do... the ones I have at the minute tend to be kind of propped up on my bookshelves or something. But now I have even more and I don't know what I'm going to do with them but hopefully at some point when maybe I have more space I'll end up making a kind of postcard wall because all my postcards do tend to be bookish or to places that I absolutely love and have visited. So for instance I do have a Scottish postcard which has folklore on it. I do have an illustration of Romeo and Juliet from when I went to Stratford and just things like that. But during this trip I did end up picking up four more postcards. The first one being from one of the bookshops we went into, it was called Any Amount of Books and they just had these postcards that I really liked the illustration of. So I decided to pick one up and this is what it looks like. So it's literally just an illustration of the shop but I think because I do really like pink and green together as a colour palette I was just really drawn to this so I decided to get it. And then the other three are from the British Museum so I did of course pick up one that was related to the Greek section because that is the bit that I was most interested in and this is the only one that I could find that I kind of liked the colour palette of. The rest of them were very much white and grey marble type and literally just postcards of the statues which which is great but not what I was looking for so I very much like the colour palette of this one much more and is of course reminiscent of the Greek vases. And the other two are kind of more related to ancient Egypt but I do also have an interest in that. I'm just not as anywhere near as well versed in that. I do have some non-fiction books that I do want to make my way through about ancient Egypt at some point but they are pretty huge and yeah. But there are actually some ties between ancient Greece and ancient Egyptian history and mythology so 
I think that's why my interest kind of goes into that as well. But the first one, I just picked this up because I found it funny. It's basically just an illustration of a cat looking in a shop window, but these are like mummified cats and as you can see the cat that is still alive is a little bit startled so um I just I found it funny and again it kind of matched the colour palette so these will look quite nice together and then another one that matches the colour palette is literally just a design of Egyptian hieroglyphics I just think this looks really cool and when I was younger when we were learning about ancient Egypt in primary school which is of course a very long time ago and all knowledge I had of that has gone but I do very specifically remember we had lessons where we had to try and write in hieroglyphs which was just it was one of those things that I still remember to this day and I don't know it's always just been such a fond memory so I kind of I love the colour palette of this I love the design of it decided to get it because it reminded me of that time although I remember as well we did about ancient Greece in primary school and I literally dressed up as Athena at one point and I had to perform a song as Athena and we used to have to make um gold necklaces in other words cardboard that was wrapped up in gold paper of some sort but we had to make these really awful necklaces that were sacrifices to the gods and there's a museum in my city which has kind of a greek design on the outside and the big pillars and everything so we had to go and pretend we were sacrificing it to the gods and say which god we were sacrificing it to mine was of course athena i've been on that level since i was about seven apparently <laughs> Anyway, that was a random tangent that had nothing to do with London, but I got postcards and I'm very happy about it. I did get some magnets and stuff as well, but they will be going on my fridge and are mostly for my dad because he suddenly decided he wants to collect magnets, so um, yeah. <laughs> I did also buy a face mask, but this is from the body shop, so it's absolutely nothing special. I just realised on my way home that I don't have a face mask and I am very much looking forward to having a bath tonight because... London water destroyed my hair well and truly and I just feel gross so decided to get a face mask. This one is the Japanese matcha tea face mask from the body shop. These ones are quite expensive but they do seem like a luxury kind of product. Comes in a little thing like this if I can get it to focus. There we are. And this one is meant to get rid of pollution out of your face and all things like that if I can open it that would be great it smells very natural and I like that very much looking forward to using this tonight and just restoring myself because I have been kind of grumpy all the way home because I've come home very reluctantly. I absolutely love London, which I feel like would go against everything you would expect because I am a very anxious human being and London is not a place for anxiety to be winning. It is of course very busy, very overcrowded, it's just absolute chaos, but I feel like because my brain is so chaotic it just kind of fits in with it. And because London is literally designed to be quick and easy in every way possible, all the transport and everything, doesn't really phase me too much because you don't have to worry too much about missing the tube or whatever because there'll be another one in about three minutes if that so I feel like I can just swan about London hopping on and off whatever I need and not really worry about it too much and obviously you've got the contactless thing on the Oyster cards and you can just everything's just so easy and I love it <laughs> there's also so much to do and I'm just in awe of everything I want to go there so many more times but it is of course very expensive. <laughs> I do have another trip planned in December though which I'm very excited about so um yay. <laughs> but I have been sulking all the way home because this week obviously it's Monday today and my weekly vlogs have kind of jumped around a little bit but this week is going to be a bit intense. I do have quite a lot of uni work to do and I need to try and film and edit and upload two videos in three days which is not ideal but I'm gonna try and not worry about that too much because I will at the end of the day be fine. I've been very sad about it all day but um I am looking forward to settling back down into the social media kind of things. Obviously I absolutely adore booktube and I have so many comments to reply to and my last video got so many more views than it usually would have done over the weekend which just is kind of overwhelming but I'm like wow just wow <laughs> so that is a very nice thing to come back to thank you so much to everybody who has commented and 
Another thing that was nice to come back to, which I can't believe, I have a package from Amazon, or at least I presume I have a package from Amazon because there's a sticker on it that's been placed over the name, but my dad has left it, so I presume it's for me. Although, oh no, I can actually see through the sticker, it is for me. Okay, but I haven't ordered anything, but I did make my Amazon wish list public last week. So, did someone buy me something? Guess I'll find out because I'm. <laughs> this is blowing my mind. What should be something I've completely forgotten I bought? <laughs> oh my god, is there a note? I know what it is, but is there a note? I can't get the note out, it's like stuck underneath the book. Okay. Oh! Okay, so the note says Hi Ashley, hope you're doing well with all your holiday and university busyness. With a smiley face. <laughs> This was one of my favourite books this year and I hope you enjoy it too. Anna Goldberg, thank you so so much Anna, oh my god. So this one is, if I can get it out, <laughs> Gods of Jade and Shadow by Silvia Moreno Garcia. This one has been on my wish list for so long because this just looks incredible. You guys know that I absolutely love mythological retellings and folklore retellings and all things like that. This is inspired by Mexican mythology, I believe. So I will just read out what it says on the inside because I feel like this is one of those ones that I will explain really badly until I read it myself, so I will just read. The Jazz Age is in full swing, but it's passing Cassiopeia ton by. She's too busy scrubbing floors in her wealthy grandfather's house to do anything more than dream of a life far from her dusty little town in southern Mexico, a life she could call her own. This dream is impossible, distant as the stars, until the day Cassiopeia opens a curious chest in her grandfather's room and accidentally frees an ancient Mayan god of death. He offers her a deal. If Cassiopeia helps him recover his throne from his treacherous brother, he will grant her whatever she desires. Success will make her every dream come true, but failure will see her lost forever. In the company of the strangely luring god and armed with only her wits, Cassiopeia begins an adventure that will take her on a cross-country odyssey from the jungles of Yucatan to the bright lights of Mexico City and deep into the darkness of Zibalba, the Mayan underworld. Mixing the excitement of the Roaring Twenties with pre-Hispanic mythology, Gods of Jade and Shadow is a vivid, wildly imaginative historical fantasy. And on the back, S.A. Chakraborty, who wrote City of Brass, has blurbed it saying that it's incredible and I'm just... Oh my god, I'm so, so happy about this. So thank you so much, Anna. I did not expect anyone to buy me anything, so this means the absolute world to me. And, oh, it's so beautiful as well. Like, this is just incredible. I'm also so glad to hear that this is one of Anna's favorite books of this year. That just makes me even more excited, if anything, so. Yay! <laughs> But after all that, I do think this is the end of this vlog. I have zero clue how long this vlog is going to be. I have so much footage and hopefully, as I said, I've managed to mesh it all together. This isn't the end of the vlog. I forgot the reading update. Oh my God. <laughs> reading update. I'm now on page 338 of North Child by Edith Patu. I do hope to finish this tonight, but I think my general rating might be four stars, maybe, depending how the end goes. But I will probably finish this tonight, so I will put my final rating on the screen somewhere now. I am really, really enjoying this. I do have a few gripes, one of them being I don't think it needed to be quite this long. <laughs> and there are quite a lot of handy conveniences, but that kind of can be forgiven considering it's for a younger audience. But it does seem to be following this slightly repetitive pattern of conveniences of the main character going on a journey somewhere and she keeps coming across people and every single time she's in danger of having to journey further by herself, some kind of adult will come along and be like, oh actually, I was thinking of going there too, so I'll just join you and help you in every way. <laughs> So the main character has yet to be left to her own devices and her own survival skills. But then again, if that did happen, I probably would have doubted the plausibility of her surviving. So, you know, can you win? I don't know. However, I am finding it a very addictive read. I read so many pages on the coach and I plan to finish the rest of it tonight. I think the addictive side of it on my part especially is because it's reminded me of so many fairy tales. It's got elements of Beauty and the Beast in here and just so many others as well. Although that being said, with it being based on fairy tales, the age thing versus my 
predictions for how this is going to end. Will be slightly unnerving if it does go the way I think it will, based on the stories it's telling. <laughs> But I suppose we will find out and if my rating dropped or stayed the same or whatever and you want to know why then you can just ask away in the comments and I will be sure to let you know. But yes, really enjoying this one and we'll hopefully have it finished by the time you're watching this. <laughs> okay, now that is the end of this vlog. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did then please remember to leave a like and a comment to let me know that you're here. If you're not subscribed already then please consider doing that. But for now I hope you're having a lovely day and I shall see you next time with a new video. Bye!